Lipton Tea and Lipton Soups present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host, waiting to act as your guide through the squeaking door on a specially prepared travelogue. Mm-hmm. First, we'll take a little jaunt with jeopardy along the path of peril, where we'll prowl with panic until we take the left turn into Horror Highway and thence via Terror Turnpike straight into the road to ruin. I don't think I like your itinerary, Mr. Host. If you don't mind, I'd much rather take a shortcut to the Highway of Happiness via the kitchen. And uh, pray tell us, by what signpost shall we recognize your blithesome Highway of Happiness, Mary? Well, you'll just know you're headed for pleasure when you take your first taste of swell Lipton tea. Because, oh, what a world of contentment there is in every cupful. What flavor, what wide-awake flavor. No wonder the tea experts say there's only one word to describe Lipton's, and that's brisk. No wonder more folks enjoy Lipton's than any other brand of tea in the world. It's because Lipton tea never tastes dull, flat, or dreary. It's always lively and cheery. Yes, Lipton's is the world's favorite tea, and it will be your favorite, too, once you taste that brisk Lipton flavor. So be sure you try Lipton tea. Listen now to the strange tale of a boy and his twin sister, and their dog, and the records of Hurricane Cove. It's called Detour to Terror, an original radio play written especially for Inner Sanctum by Emil Tepperman. And here is Mason Adams as Jerry Watson to tell you the story himself. I had a strange, uneasy feeling all evening after Linda left to drive to Hurricane Cove. Somehow, I had a presentiment of danger. Linda and I were twins, and always, in some uncanny way, each of us had been able to sense when the other was in trouble. Tonight, the feeling was very strong. Butch sensed it, too. He was only a mongrel pup, but he was smart. I shouldn't have let Linda go alone, but she had insisted. She was a feature writer for the Manhattan Magazine, and she'd run across the trail of a story about an old family of wreckers who lived down by the shore near Hurricane Cove. The tale went that this family had made a living in the old days by placing false signals on the shore in order to lure ships onto the rocks and then loot them. It was this story that she'd gone to investigate. Unwilling to go to bed with that uneasy feeling lying heavy upon me, I dozed in the chair by the fire with Butch's whine in my ears. It must have been a dream, because I saw Linda's white face floating in a sort of haze. And then I saw the fear in her eyes as she called to me. Jerry! Jerry, help me! Help me! I came awake suddenly with a cold sweat on my face. Butch was on his haunches by the fireplace, nose in the air, and howling as if for the dead. I felt myself trembling. Linda. Linda in danger. Somewhere, somewhere out in that storm, Linda was calling to me for help. She needed me terribly. Come on, Butch, we're going after her. Within 20 minutes, I was speeding through the storm out along Highway 9. I remembered Linda's telling me just what route she'd take. See, Jerry, I'll go out on 9 to here and then turn off on the old shore road. It isn't used much anymore, but it's the shortest route to Hurricane Cove. And if I leave now, I should be there by midnight. The mist lay heavy on the old shore road and the rain drove against the windshield and the swirling fog played strange tricks with my eyes. But I knew I was almost an hour behind Linda, and I had to make time. Now, don't worry, Butch. We'll catch up to her. We'll find her. If I could only go faster. It's fog. I can't see 20 feet ahead of... Hey! 
the red lantern on the road. What? What? It's a detour sign. Bridge ahead, washed out. Detour. What'll I do, Butch? How do I know what Linda did? Did she drive straight ahead or did she take the detour? I, I've got to know I can't sit here waiting. We'll take the detour, Butch. And pray it's the right choice. <laughs> isn't taking us anywhere, Butch. I don't think Linda came this way. Maybe she didn't see the detour sign back there. Drove into the washed-out bridge. Maybe that's what the danger was. No, she couldn't have missed that red lantern even in the fog. She must have turned off. She must have come this way. Hey! There's the car, Butch. Stalled in the ditch and blocking the road. It's Linda's car. Come on, let's get to her quick. Josh, it's coming down and... Never mind the lightning. Let's go. She's not in the car, Butch. I don't see her in the car. Oh, no, she's not in here. Linda! Linda! Where could she have gone, Butch? She was always scared of thunder and lightning. Linda! How can we look for her in the dark and the fog? What is it, Butch? What have you found over there? I'm coming, Butch. I'm coming. Where, Butch? Where, behind the tree? All right. Linda. Linda. She's not... She... Linda. Open your eyes. It's Jerry, Linda. Oh. Oh, Linda, don't, don't be scared, Linda. Everything's all right. It's me. It's Jerry. Oh, oh Linda. Jerry. Yeah. Oh, thank heaven. Oh, Jerry, take me away from here. Sure, kid. Come on. Here, I'll, I'll help you out. Come on. My car's over this way. I must have fainted. I knew you'd come, Jerry. I had a feeling you would. I was afraid it might be too late. Here, get in the car. Yeah. Come on in, Butch. Gosh, you're soaked to the skin, kid. What happened here? Well, there... There was a man. He was hiding up there behind a tree. The headlights caught him when I got stalled in the ditch. How'd you come to land in the ditch? Well, there's a tree lying across the road. See, look over there. You can just see it in the headlights. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Gosh, it's a big one. Must have been struck by the lightning. That's what I thought at first. But when I got out to look at it, I saw that... It wasn't struck by lightning. What? Jerry, that tree has been deliberately cut. Linda, are you sure? Sure I am. It's been cut by a saw. The minute I looked at it, I realized it wasn't any accident. Somebody meant to block this road. Great Scott. So I hurried back into the car and I tried to turn around. I wanted to go back. You couldn't have turned around anyway. This road is too narrow. No, well, I was too scared to realize that. I started backing up and the rear wheels landed in the ditch. And it was just then that I saw the man... He was coming out from behind the tree, and he was all hunched up so I couldn't see his face. Then when the headlights struck him, he ducked back and he disappeared. I was afraid to stay in the car, so I jumped out and I started to run. Then I could hear him coming after me. And I must have tripped and my head struck something. And that's all I knew till you found me. Are, are you sure it was a man you saw again? Yeah, positive, Jerry. I don't get it. <laughs> what was the idea of blocking the road? <laughs> What's the matter, boys? He hears something. Look over there. Someone running through the woods carrying something. I'm going after him. Careful, Jerry. Look. Butch has that man by the trousers. Oh, he kicked my... Hey, you don't you kick my door. Jerry, be careful. Come on back here, you. Jerry, I'm coming with you. Oh, it's no use. He ran away in the night. Uh, are you all right, Butch? Look, Jerry. Whoever he was, he dropped what he was carrying. Uh, what is it? it? Looks like a big board of some kind. Here, I'll turn the flashlight on. Yeah. What's oh, a sign? It has lettering on it. What's it say? What well, says? Great Scott! What is it, Jerry? It says, "Bridge ahead, washed out, detour." Jerry, this is the detour sign from the highway. Yeah. They only put it up there to lure you onto this back road. Then they blocked the road with a tree. 
kid, it looks like we're in some kind of a trap. Now, what kind of a mess have we got these poor people into? Imagine finding that poor twin sister unconscious behind the tree. And it took Butch to find her, too. I wonder what kind of a tree it was. Oh, probably a dogwood tree. As you can always tell a dogwood tree by its bark. (laughs) There's poor Linda in all that trouble, and here you go, making puns. I, I can't help it, Mary. That's my nature. I ought to know it's your nature by now. And I ought to know, too, you can't change people. Take those of us who like to start each day off with piping hot Lipton tea. Why, nothing in the world could change us. In fact, breakfast just wouldn't be breakfast without Lipton. Lipton tea just seems to go with a bright bowl of gay yellow jonquils, a sunny-checked gingham tablecloth, and, of course, the morning paper. Part of the reason is Lipton's deep amber color and tempting aroma. But the big reason breakfast wouldn't be right without Lipton's is Lipton's grand, brisk flavor. It's so lively and tingling with zip. Just a cup or two of Lipton's and your spirits catch on and your day's off to a bright start. Yes, breakfast time or any time is the right time to enjoy Lipton tea. So for real tea-drinking pleasure, ask your grocer tomorrow for brisk Lipton tea. Let's get back to our story now and see what happens along that deadly detour. I have a hunch that Jerry and Linda are in for a lot of trouble. Trouble and twins, you know, never come singly. We got back in my car, wet and shivering, Linda, Butch, and I. We tried to figure out what to do. Don't you see, Jerry? This is the way those old-time wreckers used to work. They'd place false signals on the shore so that the ships would be lured onto the rocks. Mm -hmm. You think that phony detour sign back there... It was just like a false signal to a seaman. It lured us onto this back road. When they get good and ready, they'll come for us. Maybe you're right, kid. Well, Jerry, we can't just sit here and wait to be murdered. Look, Glenn, up there in the hill through the trees. See those lights? Looks like a big house. Hey, maybe they've got a phone. We could call the police. Uh Uh-huh. And maybe... Maybe what, Jerry? Nothing. You think maybe they're the ones who lured us here? We'll have to take the chance, Linda. The ground here is so soft. Isn't there a path through these woods? There is. We could never find it now. <sighs> Anyway, this is the quickest. There are the lights of the house, up ahead through the trees. Such big trees, so old and bare. They look like evil things. Like they're waiting to twine their arms around us and crush us. Quit it, kid. You'll work yourself up for nothing. We'll be at the house in a minute. What? What is it? The lights, they went out. The house, it's all dark. Quiet, Rich. Why did they put the lights out, Jerry? Maybe they went to sleep. What do we do? We'll go up and ring the bell. That's what we'll do. Jerry. What? Do you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, someone playing the piano in there. In the dark. Oh, it sounds uncanny. Come on, I'm going to ring the bell. Piano stopped? Yeah. I think I hear someone coming. Still no lights? It gives me the creeps. Someone's opening the door. Good evening. Caught in the storm, eh? Won't you come in? Uh, your lights, aren't they working? (laughs) How stupid of me. I'd forgotten. Yeah. That better? Yeah, yes, thank you. 
Uh, I, I'm Jerry Watson. This is my sister, Linda. This is Butch. How do you do? My name is Considine. Gregory Considine. And you're quite welcome, I assure you. Mr. Considine, there's been a tree cut across the road down there. Tree? Cut? You mean struck by lightning? Well, I don't think so, sir. I think it was done deliberately. I like to use your phone to call the police. Hmm. I'm so sorry. The phone is out of order. The storm, you know. I'm sure you must be mistaken about the tree. But you must be soaked through and through. Please follow me into the library. I'll get you some dry clothes. Jerry, did you see his eyes? He's blind. That's why I was playing the piano in the dark. Right in here, please. It's a nice crackling fire. You can warm up while I ring for my handyman. Matt will be here in a moment. I heard what you said to your brother, Miss Watson. Oh, I'm sorry. Not at all. I manage quite well. You live alone here, Mr. Considine? Uh, just my brother Vincent and I, and Matt, of course. We seldom see strangers here. No one uses this old back road. Mr. Considine, someone put a phony detour sign out on the main road. Really? Sounds almost incredible. Ah, here's Matt. You uh, ring for me, Mr. Gregg? Matt, uh, this is Miss Watson and her brother, and, and Butch. They've been caught in the storm. I think there's some dry clothing in the west room. Yes, Mr. Gregg. Yeah, this way, please. Are you in there, Gregg? What have you done with those people? Oh, dear. That's my brother Vincent. I'm afraid I'll have to ask a favor of you. Please overlook anything Vincent may say. He's... Shall I say, a bit strange. Oh, here you are. Well, introduce me to your friends, Greg. Go upstairs, Vincent. Go upstairs, Vincent. Is that all you have to say to your brother? What are you going to do to these people? What are you planning for them? Vincent. You can't shut me up. Look here, mister. And young lady, take a bit of advice from me. Don't stay in this house overnight. Or you'll never live to see the morning. Get out, quick. Matt, you know what to do. No. Yes, Mr. Gregg. No, please. Keep away from me, Matt. Keep away. I warn you, Mr. Get your sister out of it. No, hey, let go of me, Matt. Hey, he knocked him out. I regret that it was necessary, Mr. Watson. Vincent is difficult at times. Please pay no attention to what he said. I'm very sorry that you had to witness this painful scene. Uh, Matt, please carry Mr. Vincent upstairs and lock him in his room. I hope you like these rooms. Yes, thank you. Yes, I'm sure we'll be comfortable, Mr. Considine. They're adjoining rooms, as you see. And these doors bolt on the inside. I advise you to keep them locked all night. We surely will. Thank you for these dry clothes and for the tea. You're quite welcome, I assure you. Now just try to get a good night's sleep. Everything will be all right in the morning. Oh, Jerry, I'm scared. So is Butch. And so am I. What'll we do? First thing to do is bolt the door. Blind. Yet he frightens me, Jerry. The way he ordered his brother knocked down. Jerry, there's something I've got to tell you. What is it, kid? The name of that family of old time wreckers is Considine. You mean these are the people? Their ancestors used to loot ships. And now they're working on motors. Poor Vincent tried to warn. Jerry, what are we going to do? We've got to get out of here before they come up to finish us off. Let's take a look out the window. Oh, it's pitch black out there. Look by the streak of lightning. Did you see? Yes, I did. 
That man, that match standing under the tree with a rifle. We're stuck. No escape. What's that? Someone tapping against the wall. In there. Can you hear me? Who is it? It's Vincent. I'm in the room next door to you. It's locked on the outside. Can you get me out? We'll be right there. Quiet, Butch. Oh, Jerry, maybe there's a chance. If Vincent will help us. Come on, kid. Yeah. No noise. Here, this is the door. Look, it's bolted on the outside. They must keep them locked up all the time. Well, here goes. Vincent? Here I am. Don't make any noise. My brother has ears like a cat. And don't let him fool you. He may be blind, but he's more dangerous than any man who can see. How are we going to get out of here? Matt's watching outside with a rifle. Listen. The piano. My brother is amusing himself in the dark. He always plays the piano when he has something on his mind. Do you know any way for us to get out of here? Well, there's only a slim chance. Now listen to me carefully. The only chance is to get out the back way. But you have to pass the open living room door downstairs. And Greg is in there at the piano. And what do we do? Well, you wait here. I'll go down first. See if they've left the cellar door unlocked. I'll come back for you. Please, don't move until I return. Be careful. Yes, don't worry. I will. Jerry, what'll happen if Greg hears him? Greg will probably call Matt and then lock him up again. And what'll become of us? We'll worry about that later. He stopped playing. Yeah. Do you think he heard Vincent coming down? Oh, 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 oh. Jerry, Greg caught him. What will we do? Come on, we're going down. The lights are all out down here. I don't hear anything. Where do you think Greg is? Maybe waiting to jump us in the dark. Come on, I don't care. Stick behind me. We're going in the living room. Where's Butch? I don't know. Oh. What is it? My foot touched on me. A body. Oh. Oh. Then I'm going to take a chance on the flashlight. Stand by. All right. Oh. Great Scott. What is it? Look. What is it? What... That isn't Vincent. It's Greg. He's been stabbed. Watch out. Vincent... Somewhere around. He'll kill you. What do you mean? My brother Vincent. The one who's been doing the wrecking. We always keep him locked up. But tonight, he got away. Planted the detour sign. Cut the tree. Vincent did all that. Matt and I, we tried to stop him. Matt went out to the road. Took down the detour sign. But it was too late. Watch out. He'll be back to kill you. He's dead. Oh, Jerry. Poor Greg. And we thought of... Oh, the lights. Thank you for waiting for me. Vincent. Where'd you get that rifle? From Matt. He won't need it anymore. What are you going to do? <laughs> what do you think? You're crazy. Well, aren't we all? Now, my good friends, if you'll just say a prayer. Any little prayer will Don't do. Don't point that gun at my sister. It won't do you any good to stand in front of her. This rival is a 30-30. Now, if you're ready... Jerry, he's mad. Look out! Quit! Let him go, Let go of the gun! Let go of the gun! The gun went off in his face. Oh, Jerry. Take it easy, kid. He's dead. Don't, don't look at him. He isn't pretty to look at. What you did all right. No kidding. You can write your feature story now. The story of the wreckers of Hurricane Cove. 
And it'll be under your own byline, too. Oh, I'm going to write it under a double byline, Jerry. The records of Hurricane Cove by Linda Watson and Butch. <laughs> How does it feel to have a byline? Uh-huh, you like it. You like collaborating, don't you? Uh-huh, especially with a pretty girl like Linda, huh? <laughs> Which just goes to prove that there's a little bit of wolf in the best of dogs. But do you know the difference between a wolf call and a wolf whistle, Mr. Host? Uh, let me think. When a fellow gives a wolf whistle, he's starved. For love. And when he gives a wolf call, he's just plain starved. In which case, there's just one thing to do. Feed him. But if you really want to appeal to his better nature, see that he winds up every meal with a good big cup of satisfying Lipton tea. Men certainly go for that brisk Lipton flavor. It's so lively and full of zip. So make a note right now to ask your grocer for Lipton tea tomorrow morning. Once you taste full-bodied Lipton tea, you'll know why you find Lipton tea in more teacups than any other brand of tea in the world. For Lipton is tea at its delicious best. Start enjoying it real soon. Get the tea with brisk flavor. Get Lipton tea. Uh... Parting word of advice, friends. If you should ever awake from a hideous nightmare and find yourself driving in a mental fog along a lane that has no turning, with madmen lurking behind trees waiting to strike you down, and strange beasts with red tongues lapping at your ankles, and the bare and ugly trees stretching forth their gnarled arms to crush you, and there is no escape, no escape at all, why worry about it? You won't come out alive anyway. <laughs> oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum mystery novel is Benefit Performance by Richard Say. And next week, the makers of Lipton Tea and Lipton Soups will bring you another Inner Sanctum story directed by Hyman Brown and called Murder in the Night. Correction, there'll be three murders. You know, it's going to take a lot of nerve to hear this tale out, so I don't suppose you'll be listening... That is, unless you've just got to find out how a brass button in a dead man's hand traps the murderer. If so, tune in to Inner Sanctum next week at the same time. Until then, good night. Pleasant dreams. Hmm? <laughs> Here's a good way to lead off a meal. Serve quick, grand-tasting, chickeny Lipton's noodle soup. The first taste of Lipton's noodle soup takes you back to Grandma's own country kitchen. But you get Grandma's results in a jiffy because Lipton's noodle soup is a real old-fashioned noodle soup with oodles of tender noodles in savory golden broth that's easy to fix and costs little. Ask for Lipton's when you ask for noodle soup and you'll hear your folks ask for more. And tune in next week for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.